roughly speaking, on a 40 minute delay. Super. Dimitri Vitkind, first to act, and that is a raise. Now Vitkind is a very accomplished player, opening here with Ace Jack of Spades. He cashed in nine main events on the EPT. Wow. His top result being fourth in Tallinn in season seven. That was worth 120,000 euros. Total live earnings, 1.56 million. Well, he's running to Kings here. Garvum with the Cowboys on the button. Clangers. Three bet. Re-raise is to 131,000. Now, Vitkind is the effective stack here, Joe. He's got 40 bigs behind. He's out of position. I hate being in this spot with Ace Jack. Well, and now all of a sudden I'm like, man, I wish I couldn't see the other hole cards. I, I think he can fold. How much? Like, I don't know what Gavam's perception, you know, what his um, image is. I wouldn't pick him as a particularly, like, crazy player. This is a really bad flop, as we can see, for Vitkind. Yeah, he called the three bet out of position. He improves to top pair, top kicker, but obviously Garvam is still a four to one favorite with the over pair. Like, what's the best case scenario if you think a guy's like relatively normal, isn't going to get two out of line on the button, big 3x3 bet? What's best case scenario? Tens? Continuation bet from Garvam 131,000 into 322,000. What do you do? I mean, you can't fold now. How do you ever get away from this? Call, call. Soul read, fold. you got all your chips in the middle at that point. And the seven on the turn changes nothing. Garvum now a nine to one favorite. I think if you're Gavam, when you get called in that flop, I think you can get, be pretty confident in getting called again. Like, I don't know what Ray's calling under the gun and then calling a flop bet and then folding turn, except for maybe, like... Ace King that decided to peel one time. You have to be a little bit worried, I guess, about jacks and aces. Two hundred and ninety-five thousand. Vitkin has seven hundred and eighty-three K behind. Garvin doesn't look like the kind of player who's going to get stubborn with a hand like Ace Queen or Ace King and be. That's barreling. what I mean. He's just he's just reeks of strength. That said, it would be a phenomenal laydown to fold top top here. He can't really call is the problem. He's got like a half pot bet left behind if he calls. Wow. Vitkind check raises all in on the turn. Quick call from Garvam and Vitkind's at risk. Which is the 10% chance of survival. Wow. Did not expect this to escalate. I mean, once that flop hits, I think that's it. This has got to be the biggest pot of the tournament so far. 2.1 million. Oh, oh, an ace man. on the river! 
How in the world? Yeah, that's the appropriate face. <laughs> that's, that's the right amount of embarrassment. Wow. Yeah, just get turn those kings over. Four outs and he hits one of them. And Vitkind is now third in ships, playing close to 90 big blinds. Garvum dropped below 40. Out of Vladimir Trinovsky with a Jack Nine suited. Not interested, so it's just going to be about the big blind defending. Well, with a short stack and King Queen, one might imagine. He'll put his foot down here. I don't know. He's not the rip it in type, yeah. No. He's at a few spots where it looked like he could potentially have done. He's in a very similar spot with nines before and just flatted. Um, I'm okay with this with King Queen. I don't think you, you have to. You think you're going to get called by an ace a lot from an early position raise, and then, hey, you can hit a flop and feel a lot more comfortable, although he's behind. That's horrible. And these are the kind of hands I always find it very hard to like put your opponent on. I mean, obviously, you know, you work through it and it's in there, but two pairs so often so hugely disguised. Yeah, no, when you flop top pair here, you're in big, big trouble. Let's be honest. Look, I mean, the thing is, you gotta love this. You got the backdoor diamonds, you got yourself the gut shot. I mean, yeah, you, even you know, it's oh. should be a snap call from Trinovsky. And he does have a bit of a sweat here. Nine outs for Bubnov. <coughs> yeah, two cards to come behind but not dreadfully behind from the mathematical point of view Let's see how kind or vicious the turn is to bugnov mind you he's here on a 10 bucks spin and go so the story so far pretty good pretty sweet Let's see if we can make things just a bit sweeter well he does make candy for a living so <laughs> 12 outs now for Bubnov. Yep, a 7 to counterfeit the 2 pair. 10, Queen or King. That is none of those things. And after a while, we do lose our first from the final 6 here. Bubnov is done. Much like his latest batch of chocolate, this ending is bittersweet. That's a handsome round of applause. Peter managed to sit back as two of his opponents got knocked out, laddered up rather nicely. The Twitter hashtag is PokerStars TV. There is the live chat on Twitch as we get back to it. Cards out again. We see Dimitri Vitkin folding under the gun. Saeed Garvam is an amateur poker player, runs a sports betting company, hails from Iran. He's got king seven of diamonds on the button. Of course, the dynamic's going to change four-handed here. Everyone gets a little bit looser, a bit more experimental. Harder and harder for the players to put each other on hands. All semblance of tightness. Not going to serve you so well. Jack-10, very attractive on the big blind. Pavel Shershikov is a professional cash game player. He is called out of the big blind, but Garvin was ahead before the flop. He's ahead after the flop, pairing his seven. With Shershikov checking. Let's see what Garvin does with bottom pair.
Looks like a sea bat. Blue chips, 5k. Green chips, 25k. 110,000 for the bat from Garden. Gun shot. Meh. Uh, Alright, let's yeah. take another card. King of Spades on the turn. Garvin running pretty well. Got to be said for a big chunk of the last level. And here we are already. Turns two pair. Pretty wet board. Various things to be concerned about. Make sure you get value if someone's going to draw out against you. 485,000 in the middle. So Garvin fires 290,000 into 485,000. Shashikov double gutted now. Just too many ways to improve. Gonna pay to see that final card. Fingers crossed for the river. Garvin improves to trips. The board bricks out for Shershikov. Don't think he'll put any more chips in. It's a boat, mate. It's a boat. Seven's full of kings. Of course it is. It's even better. Not that it really matters. Shershikov at no point really had anything other than Fingers crossed and a couple of options, but whiffs on all occasions. Funny, just thinking back to knee, it kind of feels like these are sort of the hands. The spot the Shushkov's in now is kind of what Ni was getting into. Lots of draws, lots of ways to get out of it, but was being so much more aggressive. So that when it come to having made nothing at the end and letting the hand go, much more expensive for Ni in all those instances than this perhaps is for Shushkov. But suddenly uh, giving away a lot of emotion. I don't think we've seen him bang his head on the table and let out enormous sighs like that before. Hardly a statue. I mean, one would like to think that all of this uh, mumbling to himself and eyebrow raising, maybe he's going to come in with some flunky move. It would be dreadful timing. But we know he can't be wondering if he's good because he has jack high on the sevens. Really weird. Unless he immediately knew he was letting it go, but just wanted to sell that he doesn't do this kind of thing on weak draws. I, I don't. I don't get this at all. I, I really don't know what he's considering. Well, with his body language, raising now is not an option. So For sure. Bluffing just ain't going to happen. And the Jack High Hero call would be mistimed, question mark? And just out of character as well. Pass. Two minutes to pass. I, I'm just, my hope is that it was just to make it look like he was much stronger and he's made a brilliant lay down here. 
But I, look, just one clap from a confused member of the audience <laughs> and lets you know exactly how strange that hand was. Well, Garvin chips up to 2.4 million, just below Dimitri Vitkind on the leaderboard now. Both players... Vlad first to act. He folds. Shashikov's on the button. And Shershikov has kings. <coughs> King balls. It's a raise to 120,000. Queens for Vikins. Ay ya. Unfortunately, there is no equality in the deck of poker just yet. The men outrank the women. Unless they're jacks. Even still, I think the jacks make like 22% more. Vitkin counting out a three bet. A fist full of green. Those are the 25k chips with a bit of blue on top. The blues being 5k's. So it's a re-raise to 340,000. Garvin has folded the big blind. Action back on Shershikov. Will we see a four bet or will we see a flat call? At this point, I'm pretty sure we're four betting. Pretty rare at this stage of the tournament to see too much creativity with big pocket pairs. How do you keep this still? How do you act this slowly? I'd have been all in and standing already. That noise in your ear holes is a four bet alert. Re raising to 700,000 and expect the five bet shove from Vitkind. John Delano's tweet, also applicable. Insert car crash sound effects. Vitkind shoves, Shershikov calls. It's a cooler. Queens into Kings. When he gets snap called, he knows that there's a really good shot. Queens, they're racing at best. And this is not at best. Shershikov dominates Vitkind here. Four to one favorite to eliminate Vitkind in fourth place and take us down to three players. He's already holding his heart. Kaka. Jack, Jack, eight. Spades not a factor. Two outs for Vitkind. Looking for a queen on the turn or river. The turn card. Is a king and it's all over. Shershikov is a sure thing. Vitkin drawing dead on the turn, eliminated in fourth place. Dimitri cashes for 10.78 million rubles, roughly 190,000 right. US dollars. Thank you. It's okay, okay, no problem. And just like that, we are down to three players, and Shershikov has <laughs> moved. Troyanovsky, the short stack on the button. In the small blind. King seven of clubs, he calls. A shove from Shershikov with a six. And Vlad calls all in. Live cards. I'm going to say it again. This could be it. <laughs> if Shershikov's ace high holds, we have a champion. But Vlad does have live cards and a live suit. If... Ace high doesn't hold. I am going to start calling this a comeback. Francesca Gunn agrees. She says slowly but surely, Vlad's going to get back in. Oh, 
Looking for a king. A seven. Some clubs. He's got 41% equity. And Shershikov is the favourite to take down the tournament. Six on the flop <laughs> and two hearts. Brutal flop for Troyanovsky. He does have an up and down draw now. He's got dirty outs up to Wazoo. But his equity's not terrible. 28%. Threes. Sevens, eights, and kings working for him. As long as it's not a heart. No additional outs on the turn. Ten cards. Vladimir Troinovsky can hit. Any other card on the river, and we have our champion. The river card. Is a jack. No comeback. It is over. Pavel Shershikov wins the PokerStars Championship Sochi main event. Vladimir Trinovsky is the runner-up. Damn. GG, Vlad. He just ran colder than a Siberian winter. Shershikov has dominated this tournament for several days. He has dominated the final table for most of the day. He absolutely crushed Vlad during this heads-up.